Let's learn in this video how to create a workflow in GitHub Actions to deploy into a Kubernetes cluster. This workflow will start by creating the Docker image, then pushing that image into a registry that could be Docker Hub, and then pushing that image into a Kubernetes cluster that could be AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service, using YAML files. I'll use this sample project available on GitHub repository as an open source project. I have already cloned that project on my local machine. So if I switch right here, I will have multiple uh, folders. One folder for the web application that is an ASP.NET MVC core application that have a Docker file that will define all the instructions needed in order to create the Docker image. And then we have a second folder which is called Kubernetes. This one will contain the YAML manifest files for Kubernetes. So we can, we can see here we have the deployment and we have the secrets and all the required uh, files needed to deploy a, the, an application into a Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster. And then I have a third uh, folder, which is the one that will contain the GitHub Actions workflows. So this one here contains uh, four workflows. We'll go through the first one here, which is the simplest, and then we'll go to expand to the second one in the next uh, videos. Let's see first this one. So this workflow here will be triggered each time I have a push on the main branch and each time I change only this YAML file. Here it's for the purpose of uh, uh, demoing and when I was preparing this pipeline I didn't want to trigger it, uh, the pipeline each time I have a change in the application source code because I was focusing only on this uh, uh, file. So that's the path. We can also exclude some other paths and this pipeline will be also triggered each time I have a pull request. And if I have, I could also trigger this pipeline manually with the workflow dispatch. So in this workflow, I have only one job that will run inside a runner that is an Ubuntu latest, in which it have the runner, the GitHub Actions runner already installed there. And here I'm defining some environment variables. So First group of environment variables are for the Docker image. So here I'm mentioning the Docker repository, which is the Docker Hub. So I have created a free account on Docker Hub, and this is my Docker ID. And then I pick here a name for my Docker image and a tag for that image. Not for the tag, I'm using a GitHub environment variable, pre predefined variable that is the run number, which is the GitHub run number that will be uh, incremented each time a new build is triggered. So it will start with uh, first run, it will have the number one, then two, and each time I run that pipeline, it will be incremented. And then because I want to deploy into an AKS cluster, Azure Kubernetes Service, which is a Kubernetes service available on Azure, I'll go here to provide the, my cluster name and the resource group. By the way, I have already created that AKS cluster within my Azure subscription. And then for the steps here, I go to uh, first check out the application source code and then I go to build that docker image using the command docker build. Note that here we can also use a step predefined for docker build but we can also use the command line because here we know that the uh, docker CLI and the docker daemon are already installed inside the runner agent so we can directly go to run this command line and that's somehow a little bit better than using the uh, the step provided by default and within the github marketplace because this one will give you more flexibility and more control over what you want to do on that uh, step so typically using the command line is, um, in most of the cases, it's better than using the predefined steps. And then after that, uh, after that, I have the image already created with the tag that was provided right here with the, these environment variables. Now I'll go to scan that image. So I can use multiple open source tools. One of them is Trivi. So here I'm using uh, Trivi action in order to take that uh, image and scan it. So Trivi will go to download that image, scan it, it will scan for its OS and the libraries looking for any severity of type medium, high or critical. 
and after that and of course here i can um i can uh, break my pipeline at this step if it will find some critical findings for example and that does make sense so that uh, the developers will go to rec to uh, uh, correct or to add modification to their docker image to uh, to solve those critical uh, security secu security findings after that we go to push the image into docker hub or into container registry so that first here i go to login to the docker hub for that i run here the command docker login providing my repository password which by the way i have provided in the github secrets so from here if i go to my github secrets page switching here for my secrets i have already the docker repository uh, password right here Note that I have other secrets that I'll be using later to connect to the Azure subscription and to connect to my AKS cluster. So now the syntax of this one is this line right here, docker login, then I provide the name of my docker registry as the username and then the password I provided in stdin. So that for that reason, I'm using here echo secrets.docker repository password. So it will be passed to this parameter right here. And then I'm going to push that image into the Docker Hub using simply by using the command docker push and then the name of my command. After that, uh, now I go to deploy the application or deploy the YAML manifest files into my Kubernetes cluster. But first, that YAML contains actually a reference to my Docker image. So if I go here to my uh, application MVC um, e deployment file, I see here that I have the image, so I can provide the uh, reference, a hard reference for that image with its uh, Docker uh, ID, with the image name and with the tag, but I need to update it each time I, ha I run the pipeline because each time I run the pipeline, it will, I will generate a new Docker image with a new tag, so I need to update the, these values right here. So what I have provided here is um, uh, this, um, uh, naming convention that will use environment variables defined in my GitHub repository or in my GitHub actions pipeline and then variables defined here. So note that these variables docker repository, image name and image tag are the same ones defined in my repository. So coming back to my pipeline, I say here I want to provide the environment variables with uh, the values that I want to use right here. So Docker repository will be replaced by the environment variable Docker repository and the same for image name and tag. And note that also here I have used those double underscore and that uh, will be used as a limiter or as the delimiter for the prefix and suffix like I have here. So that will go to look for those YAML files and replace the values there. Next, we'll go to connect to my AKS cluster. So for that here, I'm using the command or I'm using the step, call it AKS-set context. And uh, providing here the Azure credentials, I'll go to connect to that AKS cluster. Those Azure credentials are the uh, service principle that I have already created. And that is this one right here. So I have created it using the command ad az ad sp create for airbag, then the name for that service principle, the role owner. I need that role uh, owner over my uh, subscription or uh, over a specific resource group. And then I specify SDK of. And that will generate a sample or will generate um, a JSON like this one here that contains the client ID, the client secret, which is um, the uh, use the password for the service principle and then the tenant ID and so on. So it provides all the information and I have saved that secret as a GitHub secret and here into the uh, action secrets inside the Azure credentials. And then when providing the cluster name and resource group name, I'll be able to connect to my AKS cluster. After that, now I'm ready to deploy the YAML manifest files into my Kubernetes cluster using the step here, Kubernetes deploy. So I'll provide the manifest files here or the YAML files, and then this task will go to deploy them into my cluster. 
After that, I'll go to scan the configuration of my cluster by using a tool like KubeBench, which is an open source tool available on GitHub. So I could deploy a job for specific for AKS that will go to scan my cluster configuration and then I'll wait for a few seconds until it finishes its uh, scanning and then I'll go to look for the findings inside the logs. So I'm um, looking for the log of my job called QBench and then that will be showed inside the console and then I'll go to deploy that job because I don't need it anymore. Let's see this running. So switching to GitHub Actions and this uh, project, I find here my uh, my workflow and the latest one that did run successfully. I'll run this workflow again by clicking on the Run Workflow button and that will trigger running that workflow right here. And here I can see my workflow started running. If I click on it, I will find my job for building and deploying into AKS. If I click on it, I'll be able to see all the steps inside that job that will start by checking out the application source code, building the Docker image. So here it is building my Docker image by pulling the images inside the Docker file and then running all the instructions inside that uh, Docker file. And here we can find, for example, the findings from scanning the image using Trivi. So the findings will be set into this table that will show some of the CVEs that were discovered for after scanning that Docker image. So it did found here uh, two high findings and zero critical and zero medium. Next, it did log in to the Docker Hub and then it did push the image to Docker Hub. So if I switch back to my Docker Hub uh, account right here, I go to my repository web app and here I should be able to see the image that were deployed right here. And then the next task will go to replace the, the variables inside the deployment YAML file. And then we'll go to connect to the Azure subscription or to connect to the AKS cl cluster exactly and then we'll go to deploy the YAML manifest files. So this one will show the output after deploying those YAML uh, manifest files. And here to make sure that that application were deployed successfully into my AKS cluster, I switch back to my Azure subscription and to my Kubernetes cluster and I'll go to workloads where I can see all the applications that were deployed into my cluster from all the namespaces, but I filter on the default namespace. And here, yeah, I can see my MVC deployment that were created successfully. And then the last uh, step here would go to run QBench to scan the cluster configuration. And here we can find the findings. So if I go here to check the output of this one, and the output should look like this one here. So where we have here lots of uh, uh, findings, scanning for the worker node and scanning the node configuration, scanning the kubelet and so on. And here it did found uh, did run it 14 checks that were passing and zero checks that fails and they have one warning. Great. Follow me next to see a pipeline for deploy that will go to deploy an application into a, an AKS cluster, but it will also go to run a Terraform template in order to create the infrastructure for AKS.